What's going on all my healthcare brothers and sisters? I hope that you are having a wonderful day. We're gonna continue on with our Foundations of Nursing series and we're gonna be looking at IV, IM, and subcutaneous administrations. Let's get started. So to begin, we're gonna be looking at intravenous administration, also known as IV. That means that we're injecting medication into the vein. So sites of administration really are peripheral veins, not arteries. We never wanna push medications into an artery. So most commonly, um, IV sites are going to be your hands as well as your arms. And I've included a list here in this PowerPoint to show you different areas in which we can start IV sites. So how do we administer IV medications? Well, we wanna use a 14 to 26 gauge IV. The diameters of needles increase with the lower the gauge. So a 14 gauge is going to deliver um, 240 mLs per minute, whereas a 26 gauge is only gonna deliver 13 mLs per minute. That's why it's so important when we're doing like blood, um, blood administration for like our hemorrhaging patients. We definitely wanna make sure that we have those gauges that allow us to push more in. We definitely don't wanna be administering blood through a 26 gauge. We most likely are gonna be looking at a 20, 18, maybe 16 gauge. So again, medications are rapidly absorbed into the bloodstream with this route. Um, so there's gonna be a much faster turnaround time when it comes to these particular medications. Next, let's move on to looking at our intramuscular administration, also known as IM. This means that we are injecting medication into a muscle, intramuscular. So sites of administration can include the deltoid muscle, the vastus lateralis, which is the lateral middle part of the thigh, most commonly used with our pediatric patients, as well as the ventrogluteal, which is most commonly used with our adults. There was a point in time when we used to use the dorsogluteal site, um, which is like in the back near the butt. We don't do that a whole lot anymore. It's contraindicated now, so it's not something that you're going to see in practice. So how are we going to administer IM medications? Well, we're gonna use a 18 to 25 gauge needle that's approximately 5 eighths to one, uh, one and 1 eighths needle length. So the lower the gauge, the more viscous the medication, the longer the length, um, depending on the site. So if you have a obese patient that is requiring um, a little bit of a longer needle, then you're gonna use that one and a half, whereas if you've got a really skinny person, you're only gonna really need to use the 5.8. So you're gonna have to use your clinical judgment on how big of a needle you're going, or how long of a needle you're gonna need in order to get that medication to the muscle. So this is really given at a 90 degree angle. You don't wanna give it sub Q where you're kind of going at it from a different angle. This is straight down into the muscle. You wanna pinch the skin at the injection site and then insert the needle. Some important considerations that you need to know when you're doing IM injections is that it's limited um, depending on where you're providing it. So if you were giving it into the deltoid muscle, you're only really able to give one ml into that muscle and three mls into the vastus lateralis or the ventral gluteal when it comes to adults. If you have a pediatric patient, um, you're limited to two mls in that vastus lateralis if they are between the ages of six and 12 years old. If they are zero to five years old, then we're really only able to give one ml into that vastus lateralis and then lastly, if we have a premature infant, um, we're not going to be giving a whole lot of medications in the muscular area, so we're going to limit it to 0.5 mLs when we're administering it in the vastus lateralis. So let's talk about the Z-Track method when it comes to IM injections. It is something that we use a lot. Um, you're basically going to position your needle, you're going to pull back on the skin, you're going to push down into the muscle, inject your medication, pull the needle out, and then release the skin that you pushed back. This kind of just creates like a Z pattern so that the medication stays in the muscle and doesn't come back out. Something important that came um, from the time that I went to nursing school till now is do we still aspirate IM injections? Well, according to evidence-based practice, you're gonna hear this a lot when you're doing your bachelor's and your master's, and the CDC guidelines, aspiration, which is known as pulling back on the plunger after the needle has been inserted, 
just before you give your medication is not, I repeat, not necessary because no large blood vessels are present at the recommended injection areas. So that's your deltoid, your vastus lateralis, as well as your ventral gluteal. So you no longer have to aspirate medications prior to administration. So lastly, let's talk about subcutaneous administrations, also known as sub-Q. And this is basically medication injected into the tissues. So you've got a couple different sites of administration. You've got the posterior or lateral aspect of the lower part of the underarm. This is the most common site for like insulin injections whenever you have a diabetic patient. You also have the abdomen of the, um, in the umbilical region. So this is most common when you're giving Lovenox or heparin injections. They're usually going to be administered into the tissues of the abdomen. And then lastly, you have the upper lateral and anterior thighs. I haven't given a whole lot of medications there, um, so it's not a very common site use, but it is another option. So how are we going to administer sub-Q medications? Well, typically you're going to have a 23 to 25 um, gauge with a 5-8 five eight length needle. <laughs> Um, given at a 45 degree angle, we talked about before, when it comes to intramuscular, you're going straight down at that 90 degrees. This one, you're going more in at an angle with 45 degrees. Again, you wanna pinch that skin at the injection site and insert that needle. So when it comes to the amount of medication that we can give with adults, we're really going to um, limit that to one ml or less of medication. However, when it comes to our pediatric populations, we really don't wanna be giving more than 0.5 mLs um, of any particular medication when we're doing subcutaneous injections. Lastly, I wanna talk about the difference of tuberculin syringes versus insulin syringes. If you are in professional practice or you are in clinicals, you never, ever, ever wanna confuse these two types of syringes because they do two totally different things. You can make a medication error if you confuse these syringes. So to begin, let's talk about our tuberculin syringes. And that is the syringe with the more brown top. So with the tuberculin syringes, they're not usable for insulin administration. Whereas the insulin syringes, which have the orange top, are measured in insulin units. So you've got your insulin syringe, which is measured in units, and you have a tuberculin syringe, which is measured in milliliters. So that's why you can't get these two confused because they do two totally different kinds of measurements. So when you're grabbing your syringe and you're pulling up your medication, make sure that you have the right syringe. Tuberculin syringes we're using for more of heparin type injections and uh, insulin syringes we're using for our insulin. Lastly, just to get you even more confused, insulin syringes can come in U100 and U500 size variabilities. Well, you're looking at me like, what the heck does that mean? So U100 means the measurement of units. So this one measures um, and is used for insulins that have a U100 measurement, so 100 units. There are some insulins such as Humulin RU500 that needs a different kind of syringe. Primarily, pharmacy is not going to stock these syringes on the units. Um, they will stock it if a patient is getting a U500 dose of some kind of insulin. Um, so that way you're not administering the wrong medication based on the wrong syringe. So like I said, the insulin administration bottle will advise if that U100 syringe is necessary. So make sure if it's um, new to you and you've never seen it before, that you're looking to see what specific measurement is on that insulin bottle. If it's U100 or U500. Because honestly, mistakes based on um, using the wrong type of syringe can absolutely 100% be fatal. There's a lot of statistical data out there as well as evidence-based research when it comes to um, these type of fatal errors when it comes to syringes. I highly recommend that you go back and watch my pharmacokinetics video where we discuss a lot of different things when it comes to medication administration. I think it'll be highly helpful in understanding the importance when it comes to making sure you're using the correct units of measure. 
I hope that this video was helpful in understanding IV, IM, and sub-Q administration routes. If you have any additional questions, make sure that you leave them down below. I love answering your questions. Make sure you follow me on my social media. I'm on Facebook and Instagram. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe here on YouTube and turn on that bell notification so that you're informed every time I post a new video. Additional resources and questions will be available on my website at www.nursechung.com. So make sure you head over there. But until next time, I hope you're having a wonderful day and I will see you all again soon. Bye.